Well hello and welcome to another episode of The Bob Shop. Uh, this episode we're looking at homebrew equipment, in fact this episode and several of the next episodes because there's quite a bit of stuff that I'm going to be making. Uh, as you can see behind me here I've been collecting bits and bobs to go all grain with my brewing. I've been doing extra extract brewing for uh, a few years now and it's time to make the jump to all grain. Now for all grain brewing it's mostly the same but you just do the bit at the beginning where you create your own wort instead of using uh, an extract or uh, a kit um, and so for that you need to make a mash tun. I'm sacrificing my trusty old camping cool box uh, to make a mash tun. I'm only ever going to really do five gallon batches because I don't drink beer fast enough um, and I like to do a variety of different things so I don't want to make a huge batch of beer that's going to last me forever. Um, I do smaller batches, get through those and then try something new. So five gallons is all I'm going to need. So this 30 litre cool box is going to be absolutely perfect for that. Other thing you're going to need to make is a boiler, a 33 litre uh, fermenting vessel. Uh, pinched a couple of elements from kettles but we'll get on to a little bit more about that later. So there's the kit for the boiler. Down here we have a coil of copper pipe, so I'm going to make myself a water chiller. Um, basically just a copper coil where you counter flow cold water through it uh, and that chills your, your water down uh, as part of the brewing process. And the other thing I need to make is a sparge arm. Uh, I'm going to do um, fly sparging in the mash tun, so a selection of copper elbows and tea pieces and bits and bobs, some copper pipe in the background you can see there. Uh, so I'm going to make myself a sparge arm to go on top of the mash tun. And the only, the final thing that I'm going to be making is down to my left down here, which I can briefly show you, is a fridge. I'm going to be making a uh, fermenting fridge, um, which is going to be of great use whilst I am fermenting my beer. So that's going to be great. So the first thing I'm going to make is the mash tun. So uh, I'm going to crack on with that and hopefully you'll see how I'm going to do that. Oh. So, here's my mash tun. Basically, mash tun is just an insulated box to keep the mash at a given temperature for about an hour uh, with a filter at the bottom and a tap on the side so that you can drain the liquid out and it filters as it comes out. So for those purposes, cool boxes are ideal. Most people use cool boxes, a brilliant solution to the problem. For the filter, I'm using a bit of braided hose, so I've just got this flexible um, tap fitting, uh, the tap hose. Uh, I'm going to chop the ends off, because I don't need those, pull the, the hose out from inside, and it's just going to leave me with the braided section of hose, which I will clamp on, a couple of Jubilee clips. So I will attach that to a piece of copper pipe, which will go through this tank connector, which was going to be, which will be fitted in the side of the mash tun. There, coming through that will be the, the copper pipe. Onto the end will be this fitting here. Uh, it's a, a lever ball valve. Um, one of the most important things you need to do uh, and be sure of with all your your brass fittings or all, all of your your plumbing work uh, fittings that you use for these kind of jobs is that they, they do take some some fairly high temperatures. Uh, a lot of plumbing fittings are only rated to about 60, 65 degrees um, and the brass can then sometimes give off uh, different metals and things like that can leach out of the brass apparently. So um, all of these fittings are RAS approved, W-R-A-S, which means they're fit for um, use with drinking water and, and things like that. Um, but also these are rated to 120 degrees and I made sure I got the ones that are, used, uh, that are rated to 120 degrees centigrade. Um, because obviously with the boiler, you're dealing with boiling water at 100 degrees uh, and you don't want any nasties leaching out of your metal work or anything like that. So make sure you get the um, stainless steel is brilliant because stainless steel won't have those problems but if you're using brass fittings, make sure they are RAS approved and uh, rated to higher temperatures as well. So that's basically it, it's very very simple. I'm going to bore some holes in the side here, a 19mm hole on the inside and a larger hole on the outside so that I can get this nice big fat uh, nut onto the tank fitting to clamp it in, a couple of rubber washers either side of that on the inside skin of the um, cool box uh, and that should be that, it's pretty simple and I'm going to crack on now, 
one thing to one thing to note is you do want to make sure you fit your tap at the lowest point of the cool box. Some cool boxes have a slanted uh, floor inside them. Uh, make sure you put your tap at the lowest possible point. This one is just a flat bottom, um, so it doesn't really matter where I put it. But I'm going to put it in the end, uh, in the side panel, just for ease. Um, and obviously, when you're drilling through, make sure you drill high enough up that you don't go through the floor of the internal section. Um, you want to come through the side of the internal section, the side wall, um, with enough space for your big tank connector nuts to fit on. Um, but as low down as you can possibly get to drain as much of the liquid as possible. Um, so, okay. now the way I'm going to make sure I get this in the right place is I'm going to measure down the inside wall uh, with this uh, mocked in place uh, and see where it comes to um, so that I know where this is going to sit on the inside. I'll have a measurement to this very top piece here and then I'll use the same measurement down the outside and I know that if I go through at that point there I'm not going to be too high or too low, it'll be just in the right spot. Right, well that's my tank connector fitted, nice 40mm uh, hole, yep 40mm, just checking, 40mm hole on the outside uh, and the, in the blue skin and a 20mm hole on the inside in the white skin and the tank connector comes through and the, obviously the hole on the outside is bigger so that the, um, so the, the nut can fit on and you can see that there. So that's nicely tightened up and you can see down inside it's fitted right down as low as it can go to allow maximum amount of liquid. Now the more astute amongst you would have realised that I've changed my shirt and I also had a haircut. Um, reason is I make these films over usually over a, a course of evenings, uh, I grab half an hour here, an hour there to be able to do these kind of projects. Um, very rarely can I sit down and spend two, three hours on the trot doing these things, so um, yeah, you have to excuse costume changes as we go, but uh, I did, the, did this last night uh, and I've come back to it this evening and now I'm going to fit the ball valve and the filter inside there uh, and finish the project. So the next stage will be to put a bit of BTFE tape around the threads on this tank connector. My ball valve has the right threads, uh, BSP threads in there this will just connect straight onto that, um, which is really handy. And the next job is going to be to take this flexible hose downstairs, chop the ends off. So I'll go downstairs to the basement, down to the actual bob shop, uh, where I've got a vice, which will make this job a whole lot easier. So I'll see you down there. So as you can see, the bob shop still isn't finished, but my brewery equipment is taking priority at the moment. So uh, what I have got a little bit of a makeshift workspace with my little vice on it which is just enough to cut the ends off these things so I'm just going to adjust it downwards and you'll see where we go. Trusty hacksaw and that's it. Makes very very short work of cutting these ends off.
and that's it. That is literally all it takes. Ends chopped off. Pull this hose out with a pair of pliers or something. Talk amongst yourselves. There we go. Got that out. Pair of grips on the end. And actually, the trick I found was to bunch the hose up a bit, and it oh, it widens out the uh, the weave of the of the stainless steel braid part. And once you've cracked it and you've just released it a little bit, it slides out dead easy. So using those same grips, I'm going to crimp the end over. And we just got rid of them. Flattened the end over. Get that in focus. Crimped it down. Just tidy up these little straggly ends a little bit. Save you pricking your fingers on them. But now that that's clamped down tight, that seals the end of that hose quite nicely. And then on this end, we'll go a bit of copper pipe, Jubilee clip to clamp that down and hold it tight. And that will go into the end of the tank connector. And that's it, job done. See you upstairs. Okay, so I've got my uh, braided hose, got my copper pipe. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut. Um, Maybe a four inch length, it doesn't need to be a lot, it only needs to be a little bit sticking out the end which will uh, friction fit into the inside of the tank connector um, and then just enough pipe to go inside this to give me something to stick a jubilee clip round and hold it down tight. So it really doesn't need to be very much at all, I'm just going to use a basic pipe cutter to do that and give me a nice edge. You could hacksaw it and that's not a problem but I like to use a pipe cutter just because it gives as I say, a nice finish. There you go, pops off. Now what you will find in the end of this cutter, there's a little triangular shaped piece. You just take that and run it round the, round the end of the pipe and it just cleans up any burrs around the inside of that joint there. So that just gives you a nice chamfered finish on the end of that little that end of that cut. Job's a good one. Good looking job. Right then. Again, it will help to bunch up the braid at this point. So bunch it together and it brought it makes it a bit wider which gives you the space to be able to squeeze this in. There we go, so it's in that far. It's just three quarters of an inch or so, but that's enough. And then I'm actually gonna put this right over the join between the two, not lower down, because that'll, that'll contain all the, um, the frayed ends um, which will stop me pricking my fingers on them. And there we go. That's that done. Now for the PTFE tape on here, fit the hose.
little tip for you when you're putting your PTFE tape, go in the direction of the, when you're putting the tape on, go in the direction of screwing on a thread. If you put them on, if you put your tape on the other way around, when you go to tighten your, whatever you're fitting onto the threads on, it has a tendency to unwind the tape as you're putting it on. But if you put it on the same direction, it pulls the tape tight and stops it balling up and getting in the way. So there we go. Let's fit it on there. Lovely job. Now I just need a little bit of 15 mil pipe to go on here to fit the hose onto. So the BSP fitted in there to 15 mil converter, PTFT, PTFE tape on that as well. Okay, so I'm going to go and get my plumbing grips and uh, tighten all these fittings up and that should be that. One finished mash tun. Oh, <laughs> nearly forgot. Jam that in there. I've just got a length of uh, clear vinyl hose, food grade vinyl hose, which will slot onto the end of that and give me my outlet and I'll be able to see the colour of the wart through the clear hose and then, um, yeah, job done. Next thing, boiler.